The Department of Public Health and Human Services is pleased to bring you Aging Horizons. Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, Fraud, Legal Issues, Veterans Benefits and Caregiving. Aging Horizons is a program dedicated to inform and prepare Montanans on these timely issues, making a difference to you and your loved ones. Here now is today's program host. Hi folks, today on Aging Horizons, we've got a guest from the Montana chapter of the Alzheimer's Association, Nick Hart. He's been with us other times. We always enjoy having him here, and he always brings the straight scoop on what's happening with Alzheimer's. We know it's a big topic, and we really need to get more informed, learn about it, and go forward. So you're gonna learn a lot, stay tuned. With as many as 1 in 10 Americans at risk for Alzheimer's or some other form of dementia, chances are someone you know and love will receive that diagnosis. When that happens, you may well feel devastated, but know that you are not alone. Help is available. You don't have to face dementia by yourself. Call the free 24-7 Alzheimer's Association helpline, 800-272-3900, for guidance and support. It's been 27 years. I never thought I'd still be smoking, but here I am, COPD and all. I'm about to have a granddaughter. There's so much to show her, but I'm scared I won't be able to keep up like I used to. I kind of gave up on myself on quitting, but it's different now. I want to be here for her and for my daughter. Summer in Montana is a great time to visit your local farmer's market. Enjoy the social atmosphere while shopping for a wide variety of fresh, locally grown produce. Together with both WIC and Senior Farmer's Market Nutrition Programs, you help feed your family five or more daily servings of fruits and vegetables for better health. You also help local ag producers and enhance the state's economy. So, for summer fun that's nutritious and helps Montana's economy, shop at your local farmer's market. I'm Attorney General Tim Fox. Nowadays, all of you have to worry about cybersecurity. Something as simple as visiting pirate websites can put your computer at risk. Hackers use pirate websites to infect your computer and steal your ID and financial information, or even take over your computer camera without you knowing it. Don't let hackers into your house. Be careful with the websites you visit and warn your kids on how to stay safe online. To learn more, visit my website Hello everyone and welcome to Aging Horizons, brought to you by the Department of Public Health and Human Services. I'm your host, Kimmy Everman, and today we're going to be talking about Alzheimer's and lots of other things that go along with that uh, particular topic. We have with us today Nick Hart of the Montana chapter of the Alzheimer's Association. Welcome Hi, Kimmy. back, Thanks. Nick. It's always great to have you. Thank you. And Nick, you serve as the Director of Public Policy for the Montana chapter of the Alzheimer's Association, which brings us to the first question. You're just back from D.C. here not too long ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What happened? <laughs> um, so, so, uh, so, so. Actually, by the time this airs, hopefully we we will have seen some yes. some more progress. Um, but you know, as of right now, yeah, the the, the first week of April, uh, I did uh, just get back from Washington D.C., where we held our annual Alzheimer's Association Advocacy Forum. Mm -hmm. uh, it happens every year. Uh, this year, we brought 1,200 advocates from across the country, wow. um, volunteers who are moving the needle on public policy and addressing the Alzheimer's crisis, both at the federal and the state level. Uh, uh, we were there for a few days. We had a whole host of conferences, learned a, a lot about Medicaid, Medicare, uh, but most importantly, we had uh, the opportunity to discuss uh, with all three of our members of Congress, Representative Gianforte, Senator Daines, and Senator Tester, uh, the importance of our new legislative priorities for this for this Congress. Yeah. Um, the uh, you know there were there were four pieces of legislation that we were uh, urging their support on, um, one of which would uh, would increase uh, Alzheimer's research funding to the national. National Institutes of Health, or uh, more simply put, it would increase the U.S. government's investment in Alzheimer's research funding right. by three hundred and fifty million dollars. Wow! Great. Uh, so we continue to to you know raise the ceiling on uh, the ambition of our research. There, um, we also uh, are encouraging uh, Congress to take additional steps to continue addressing Alzheimer's disease as a public health crisis. Um, look, we know it's a public health crisis right, right now. Right. Um, uh, this year's uh, Alzheimer's Association. Facts and figures told us that there are there are 5.8 million Americans living with this disease right.
right now. Uh, there are 21, over 21,000 Montanans living with Alzheimer's disease and over 50,000 people providing their care. Uh, and so what Congress did last year uh, was, was took the crucial, uh, crucial step of, of right. passing a bill called the Bold Infrastructure for Alzheimer's Act. And I won't get too into the weeds about what that okay. acronym means, <laughs> uh, but, but it, basically what it, what it did was it, it, it created a public health infrastructure for uh, the United States to address the Alzheimer's disease epidemic. Uh, over half of Congress not only voted for, but co-sponsored wow. authorizing the law. Uh, so it's clear that there's strong bipartisan support in both the House and the Senate for it. Um, it will establish Alzheimer's and related dementias, uh, public health centers of excellence, uh, which provides funding to state, uh, local, and tribal public health departments as well, which was huge. Uh, Very inclusive, yeah, because everybody's in on this, right? Right. This isn't just one section of the population suffering this. Yeah, exactly. And it, and it, and it fleshes itself out from you know the very top at the federal level down to local government. And mm -hmm. so it was really cool in Montana. What we actually saw was uh, our, our own Governor Bullock uh, co-authored a bipartisan op-ed in Newsweek Great. calling for Congress to pass this bill, uh, saying, you know, our state needs this funding. Our state wants to address this crisis. Um, the the uh, d uh, Director Sheila Hogan of, of the Public Health Department actually sent her own letter of support. Um, uh, Senator Daines, Congressman Gianforte both co-sponsored the bill. So we saw a really thorough level of support for that uh, effort in Montana. Well, it, it, because it's huge, right, mm -hmm. Nick? I mean, we have to, as, as you said, we need to be realistic. This is a big, big issue. Sure. Um, it, it all... It, it also affects in prevalence, uh, and this is something that, that uh, we know isn't talked about enough, it also affects people below the age of 65 in increasing prevalence. Uh, there are 200,000 Americans right now living with what we call younger onset Alzheimer's disease. Um, and so we're, we're actually looking at another bill um, to, to grant them access to the benefits um, guaranteed to people above the age of 60 in the Older Americans Act that oh. was passed in 1965. Right. Um, and so that's kind of a new bill that basically says if you're below the age of 60, but you have a dementia diagnosis, we're not going to let you slip through the cracks. We're going we're gonna to tweak our system to, to make sure that you have all the support that you need so that people with younger onset Alzheimer's don't right. fall through the cracks. Because right. so what we know is there's no cure, right? But what you're doing is, as you said, moving the needle on public policy towards getting a result that is going to be a healthy, helpful one for so many folks and, sure. and their families. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, we we made these these um, milestone research investments in 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 cancer, heart disease, diabetes, and and, and because of that, we've made strides as a society sure. in dealing with those public health crises. And 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 what we say is, in part, as a result of that, now that people are passing away less with those things, they're living with Alzheimer's dementia, mm. uh, and so that's uh, that's the next the next crisis for us to address. And getting to Together with all your colleagues, like that must have been great. Um, just to hear what's going on in other places, other states, you know, and, and often. I know in Montana we like to take a look at our neighbors to see what everybody's doing and maybe we can you know, replicate something. Right. It's, it's, it's certainly good to borrow from best practices and, and you know, without, uh, without reinventing the wheel, kind of right. establish a form fit approach for Montana. Right, right. Well, and we have a whole lot more to talk about because you've got lots more information. Um, people know when I have you, I always make you give us statistics. Sure. <laughs> but I think that's important because we want to make sure that we're not pretending about this. This is a huge thing. Another thing we're going to to talk about when we come back is uh, something that probably happens to a lot of us folks is you forget something. Do you really want to tell somebody about that or does it make you feel like Ugh, maybe something's going on and if it is, I'm afraid. Um, we want to make sure that you hear from us that that stigma needs to go away and we need folks to know that they don't have to be afraid to reach out for help. Uh, we want you to know that we encourage your coming uh, and getting some information and uh, helping yourself to live a better life. We have a lot more for you, so stay tuned. Every generation produces heroes, 
men and women who step forward to defend our country in time of need, no matter the personal cost to themselves. And though we can never fully repay them, we can make sure they have access to low-cost, long-term care when they need it. That's what Montana's Veterans Homes are all about. If you've got a hero in need in your family, call us. We can help. Good care is your right. In Montana, there's over 11,000 beds in nursing homes and assisted living facilities. If you or a family member needs assistance or help in obtaining information about care issues and placement options, call 1-800-332-2272. If you or a family member need information about Montana's long-term care resident rights, or if you need help solving a problem or a complaint about a nursing home or an assisted living facility, call us at 800-332-2272. If you give or receive care, you already know that it can cause stress on caregiver and receiver alike. The good news is, if you have limited resources, help is available. The Montana Lifespan Respite Program may be able to help you pay for care while you take a break. Even better news is how easy it is to apply. You can get an application online or have one sent to you. We'll get back to you within five working days. Respite for caregivers. It's okay to need it. It's okay to want it. It's okay to get it. If the Aging Network in Montana was a restaurant, the sign out front would say over 50 million meals served over the last 30 years. Since adequate nutrition is critical to health and quality of life, nutrition services are an important factor in keeping older Montanans healthy, independent, and living in their community and home. To find out more about senior nutrition programs in your area, call 1-800-551-3191. Hello everyone, welcome back to Aging Horizons. We're here with Nick Hart today of the Montana chapter of the Alzheimer's Association. Nick, when we left, we just were starting to talk a little bit about stigma and the fact that it can be um, really difficult for people to have the conversation with someone else. Yeah, I think I'm forgetting things, right? I, things aren't quite right or, or whatever. Can you speak to that a little bit? Sure. Um, so, you know, I don't think it's a mystery to anybody that there is a huge stigma around uh, Alzheimer's disease, other forms of dementia, and I'll kind of take it from a, maybe a bird's eye down to the ground level view. Um, one of the more common questions that we are asked is what is the difference between Alzheimer's and dementia? Mm -hmm. uh, so to right out the gate, yeah, answer that for that. the viewers. Yeah, let's do uh, that, um, Dementia, much like the term cancer, is an umbrella term. If you, if you tell somebody you have cancer, that could mean that, that you have prostate cancer, breast cancer, any variety of that disease. Similarly, dementia is an umbrella term, and Alzheimer's is a type of dementia underneath that umbrella. Uh, we, we estimate that it accounts for uh, between 60 and 70 percent of people who have dementia, a form of dementia, either have Alzheimer's as that form of dementia or have uh, Alzheimer's with another co-occurring form of dementia. Okay. Um, so to talk more broadly about what dementia means, when, when you reach a point to where you can get a dementia diagnosis, what, what people consider diagnosable is uh, memory loss that interferes with your ability to, to live your day-to-day -day okay. life. Uh, and so obviously when you, that's a relative term, right. there's memory loss and then memory loss that interferes with your day-to-day -day right. functioning. Right. Uh, so it exists on a spectrum. And it's not until you reach a certain, you know, you can move down this spectrum of memory loss until you reach the daily interference point and that's when it becomes dementia. Right. The reason that I bring all of that up uh, for you and for your viewers uh, is to say that um, when I say that we know that there are 21,000 people living with Alzheimer's disease in Montana, those are people with a diagnosis. We, okay, so those aren't necessarily people just someplace on the spectrum somewhere. Right. Gotcha. Um, we can't okay. necessarily quantify, at least not yet, how many people we really have to worry about. And so the example that I'll leave with you is probably pretty relatable. If I've lived in the same house for 30 years and I'm driving you know, down the same road that I always have and I get to that last four-way stop before I just hit the straightaway home and I cannot for the life of me remember where to turn, would I pick the phone up and call my, my wife, my kids, and say, I'm terrified, I can't remember how to get home, or would I just pull out my GPS, find my way home, right. and not tell anybody about it? Right. Uh, and so stigma is a gigantic piece of, of why we're dealing with this. Right. Uh, for, for so many reasons that I'm sure we'll right. get into here shortly, it's important right. for people to talk to their doctor about this and vice versa. Well, I, I, and I think you make a great point, Nick. You know, and I've told you, my own mom said to me on a recent you know, phone call, do you think I'm getting dementia? And she 
she's just a 92 year old with some issues with memory like I think we'd all get mm -hmm. but she was so fearful to bring it up to me um, and when you're when you're that age uh, and and perhaps admitting to something like that might mean taking your car keys away she doesn't have her car keys but mm -hmm. if she did take her car keys away or making her live someplace she doesn't want to live or re restricting something she doesn't want restricted you know y you can see where people get afraid to bring those kinds of things up when it's probably one of the most important conversations to have. It is. Um, right? and, and for all of those reasons that you just mentioned, early diagnosis is important because early diagnosis gives you the chance to, well, before you have moved down that path, you right. know, to, to a further extent, to have that conversation with your family, to say, you know, Kimmy, you're the one that I want making these decisions right. for me. Um, and, and, and I think the, you know, the stigma around the disease is both what keeps people from being more proactive about their diagnosis. And then ultimately, it makes it in some ways too late to have that conversation about right. who you want to be handling your finances, who you right. want to be you know, making, making those decisions for you or helping to make those decisions for you. Um, I would also just add um, that this isn't necessarily a conversation that uh, people with memory loss or who, who are feeling memory loss, mm -hmm. this isn't necessarily a conversation that they have to have with family members right off the bat. Right. Uh, one thing that we're really excited about is that um, in, you know, for the first year, um, we had last year a care plan reimbursement that doctors could actually code to Medicare um, for dementia care planning. Um, it was available in 2017, um, but fewer than 1% of seniors living with Alzheimer's received the care planning benefit. So it's an exciting and a challenging moment because that benefit is out there, but this is a huge awareness opportunity. It uh, is. And, and so we, we, you know, the more that we talk to, to clinicians, providers, right. and patients, the more that these conversations happen, and, and hopefully the more proactive we can be in dealing with this stuff. Well, You've stumped me. I sat there with my mouth open because I didn't know Medicare paid for that. That's awesome. And I'm really happy to know about that because that is one way for doctors to really broach that. Sure. And and, and put it out there. And it it's not going to be a problem for anybody. Sure. You know, I mean, unless you don't want to talk about it, I guess. Right. And, 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 <laughs> and, you know, one thing I, I say pretty often, too, is that I am by no means a doctor. Right. I, I'm not going to pretend like I know what it means to bill to Medicare. I hear it's complicated, but we have plenty right. of resources that are there right. to to help people through that. Well, and folks that are over 65, for the majority of them, they have docs that take their Medicare already. So it isn't like they're not already seeing a physician who you know doesn't know how to do that because they usually do. Right, and 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 it's not as if uh, it's not as if there isn't a sense of importance around this mm -hmm. issue. I mean, uh, because of our facts and figures report this year, we we have data that shows that an overwhelming amount of of uh, you know you know physicians have said that that they believe this cognitive assessment you know is important that they believe taking these steps with their patient is important and we also know that an overwhelming amount of seniors believe that it's important to have that conversation with their doctor but the question is who's initiating the conversation yeah, how you get and there exactly exactly <laughs> that you know great uh, great conversation um, Nick and folks we're going to talk a, a bit more about this um, as I said before we want to make sure that everybody's living their happiest healthy day and not worried about talking to their doctor about things like this or their family. We have a lot more to tell you about with our great guest Nick Hart, so stay with us. I think the most pleasant surprise when we turned 65 and signed up for Medicare Part B was finding out about our Welcome to Medicare preventive visit. It was free and it gave us the opportunity to visit with our doctors and establish a plan for our health going forward. They reviewed our medical history, measured our height, weight, blood pressure, and counseled us on other risk factors. To learn more about Medicare's free or low-cost preventive and wellness benefits, call your local SHIP counselor at 800-551-3191. I mentioned it's free, right? Twice. Questions about Medicare and other types of insurance? Contact the State Health Insurance Assistance Program Office to get answers to questions like, what is the difference between Medicare and Medicaid? And how do you decide if you need Medicare supplemental insurance? This insurance counseling program is not a sales program. It is available to provide answers to your insurance questions. 
For more information, call the State Health Insurance Assistance Program Office at 1-800-332-2272. Cook foods to the right temperature using a food thermometer. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. In Montana, we know all about responsibility and personal accountability. Don't pay another medical bill that you don't understand. Take charge. Review your medical bills and call your provider right away if you have questions. If your bills are too confusing, call Montana SMP, the Senior Medicare Patrol. Call 800-551-3191 and get connected directly to a local office. Call Montana SMP today. Hi everyone, welcome back to Aging Horizons. We're here with Nick Hart. Um, and Nick, we're talking about Alzheimer's. Uh, and you know, we've been having our own conversation about conversations yep. and uh, how, to, how to really broach some of this stuff that can be scary and intimidating and overwhelming and um, speak to that. Okay, uh, so in our last segment, we kind of left off about conversations right. that are that are happening and not happening between uh, you know between clinicians and their patients, uh, or or you know doctors and their patients. Uh, it's really important for providers and individuals living with uh, with dementia to know about available. Uh, care planning services that there are um, because you know families and medical providers are able to discuss medical decision making in a really intimate way obviously uh, caregiver needs social supports the wishes of the person living with dementia for future care needs and studies show that one reason doctors don't disclose an Alzheimer's diagnosis even if their patient has one uh, is because they they is, is because of a lack of treatment a lack of resources oh. that they feel okay. um, is available and so outreach on the availability and elements of the care planning code that we had mentioned earlier uh, will educate providers on what can be done after a diagnosis uh, as well as to assure them that they will be reimbursed for their time in providing those services now on the uh, on on the from the perspective of the person who is affected by it um, obviously the Alzheimer's Association um, is is a it, we're there for people. Right. Um, we offer a host of free resources. Right. We have our 24-7 helpline. Right. Um, and so we want people to know that those resources are available as well. Uh, our hope is that the more support that people know is available across the board, these more the more these conversations happen. Yeah. And the better right. off we'll all be for it. And I think, you know, as a caregiver myself, I always root for that caregiver and make sh you know, talk about what they're going to need in, in that situation as well. And I think what you're talking about is is so helpful to everyone that's that's involved and um, I think you know just one of the services that a caregiver um, that we talk about all the time is the the respite the lifespan respite which you know we've got a show coming up on that really soon and we'll talk more about that but those are exactly the kinds of supports everyone needs not just the person suffering the dementia but also the family and the friends that are um, involved and you know you get your medical team and such in there so I, I you're right those conversations have to happen and it's uh, super to hear that Medicare's on board I'm happy to hear that because that would be something very very um, resourceful and supportive to a person in their family. Right, and and, and that uh, the availability of that care planning yes. code from Medicare was a direct result of our work with Congress. Oh, great. Uh, and, and so this, you know, it's, it's, it's no accident that this kind of, you know, puts us squarely in, in the realm of the fourth bill that we're trying to pass, which is uh, the Improving Hope for Alzheimer's Act. Okay. Uh, we, we have asked all of our members of Congress in Montana to co-sponsor that. Um, but uh, that And it's Improving Hope for Alzheimer's. Improving Hope for Alzheimer's. Okay. And, and, and these conversations that happen between you know a, a, a patient and their doctor specifically around this care planning code are exactly what that bill hones in on uh, improving and so um, we're making you know steps in in our communication with the general public and our communication with providers as well as our uh, our policy making efforts with Congress and so it really is a multifaceted effort yeah and you know I think um, a as part of the Alzheimer's Association Nick you, you always, you're always inspiring with even though the numbers are huge 
There's a lot of hope, isn't there? There is. I mean, yeah. um, you know, 21,000, did you say, people in, in Montana? Yes. That are living, and you said with a diagnosis. Those are actually people with a diagnosis. Mm -hmm. That's a big number. I should say 21,000 people with Alzheimer's disease. Okay. Mm -hmm. The okay. diagnosis part is kind of... Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll stay, right. We're not doctors. We'll stay away from that. Right. 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 But I think... Um, you know, and to know that it's such a huge dilemma all over the country um, and to have this much work going on, it's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's a lot that everybody can do. Yeah. What can they do? That's a great, that's a great um, <laughs> remark I, before we leave because we only have a couple more minutes. What can they do? Well, well in addition to uh, just really staying in, in, in touch with these, uh, you know, with these policy efforts, I certainly wouldn't be frustrated if somebody mm -hmm. urged their member of Congress to support any of these things. Yeah. Um, but, you know, yeah. uh, apart from that, um, I, the, a really, really meaningful way that people can get involved uh, right now, actually, by the time this airs, uh, is the longest day, uh, which many of your viewers and you know, yeah. Uh, is is an annual um, fundraising event that yes. we have to raise uh, to raise funds for research for for a cure and intervention uh, as well as care and support for all those who are affected. Right. And so our longest day, uh, you know, by virtue of no accident, occurs on what is literally the longest day, the <laughs> solstice, um, because we know that that every day can feel the, like the longest day for a person with dementia and their yeah. care providers. Yeah. Um, so uh, what we do on the longest day is that uh, you know statewide we invite communities in Montana, individuals to start events as fundraisers and anything can be an event uh, you basically turn a hobby into an event whether it's baking golfing wow. poker yoga basketball wow. music you name it yeah uh, and and really you, you can kind of take that formula and and do what you love to do to, to raise funds with people that you love to support a cause that you support right and uh, and so uh, our another statistic to give to you yeah, is that uh, uh, once every 65 seconds in America a person is diagnosed with dementia mm. it's, again it's once every 65 seconds so we're shooting for 65 longest day events across the state of Montana we've got things going on in Missoula Bozeman Drummond uh, Trigo uh, Billings so really all across the state check out our website if you want to get involved okay, uh, that we'll is a great way to do it well Nick this has been been a great conversation. Um, always has. A, it's great having you here. You always bring such wonderful hope about a really tough situation that we know is out there. But folks, um, you know, this is one of those situations where early detection is really going to be helpful. If you're feeling like something's going on, talk to your family, talk to your physician, a friend. For heaven's sakes, you could even reach out to somebody at the area agency and talk to a ship counselor or one of the technicians there let them know and get some guidance uh, don't suffer alone we want to make sure that you have all the information you need for your best life for aging horizons I'm Kimmy Everman and I'm so glad you were with us today come back next time special thanks to the Department of Public Health and Human Services for their continued support hosts on aging horizons are program specialists at the Montana Office on Aging Production facilities provided by Video Express Productions. For more information about Aging Horizons, call the Department of Public Health and Human Services toll-free at 800-332-2272.